There was a question posed by the second speaker, and I think I can supply some answers to her. Her question was, why are farmers not growing protein crops? Now, one of the reasons for this, looking at beans, is that we have now banned the use of simazine. That did make beans very easy to grow, because uh, that chemical simazine killed every single weed, particularly black grass. That's been banned by the EU now, and so um, other weed control is more expensive. But of course, beans are just a break crop in a farmer's eyes. They would rather grow wheat, which is, is more profitable. And looking at alternative break crops, oilseed rape is simply a better one, and so they would rather grow that than they would beans. There is another problem with peas and beans in that they can only really be grown once every five or six years because of root diseases. Another problem with peas is that it's a very high weight of seed that you plant per acre. There's a relatively high cost per acre of the seed, which means if you do get a failure and you have to redrill, it's a very expensive operation. Peas are also susceptible to poor soil conditions at drilling time, what we call wet feet. If the seedbed's just a little bit too moist, you will get a huge dramatic reduction in the yield. Peas and beans are very susceptible to soil acidity. And so that's another expense you have. If you grow them, you may have to apply lime. The soil types for peas are pretty restrictive. You do need very good land, grade one land. If you have stony soil, peas are a low growing crop. And if they go down, the combine is trying to scrape these peas off the stony ground with the result that a lot of stones go through the combine. Another huge problem in growing peas is pigeon damage. Pigeon numbers have risen dramatically over the last 20 years, and although you might say, oh well, oilseed rape suffers from pigeons as well, yes it does, but it suffers from pigeons in the wintertime when the days are a lot shorter and you can go out with a shotgun and have bangers during daylight hours and not inconvenience the public. Peas, on the other hand, are very susceptible to pigeons in May and June where the days are a lot longer and it simply isn't acceptable to have bangers and guns going off in the very early hours of the morning. Wet conditions at harvest are a big problem with peas. Uh, you get in the separation system of the combine a build-up of solidified sludge, for want of a better word, which can really damage the combine. And if you're trying to sell your combine, you will get a premium for it if it's never combined peas or bees. It's as simple as that. Slight on, just on another subject, can I make a simple point, often overlooked by EU officials. Our second speaker referred to new US guidelines. I'm sure she was being accurate. However, guidelines are not regulations. They are voluntary. I might say democratic, adaptive, because people choose to. Thank you. Mr. Enyo has, has the floor. Thank you, Chairman. This is a complicated subject to describe, as you will hear. Imagine how, it is, how complicated it is to actually implement it. Although becoming live in January, this system is only just starting to bite in the UK, and the major test being the current store lamb sales. For the benefit of the translators, a store lamb is a partly grown lamb produced by one farmer and sold to another who has the land and facilities to fatten it over the winter. Millions of lambs are traded in the UK like this each year, involving movements of hundreds of miles from the hills to the lowlands. It's a major logistical exercise at the best of times, with lambs being penned in evenly matched groups of about 20, and then in turn each pen is opened and the lambs are walked up an alleyway into a sale ring where the buyers can get a good look at them and bid accordingly. The lambs are then walked back to the same pen by a different route. At Ashford Market in the southeast of England, 8,000 lambs can be processed like this in one day. A farmer may sell 20 pens with several different purchases buying different pens. The new EU rules now involve an extra operation for batches of female lambs that might be used for breeding. These will potentially fetch a higher price and many farmers will segregate them like this on the off chance that they may interest a buyer of breeding sheep. Once penned, each lamb must have its tag read by an electronic wand. This job is, of course, made so much more difficult by the moving around of the sheep in the pen and the habit of some to lower their heads under the bellies of other sheep. There is still a real risk of lambs getting from one pen getting mixed up with others after they have been identified, either by jumping over the rails 
or by pushing open a pen gate that has accidentally not been secured properly in the fast-moving hustle and bustle of the market. To solve this problem, the auctioneers mark each sheep, each sheep in each pen with a colour for that pen that is different to the colour of all the adjoining pens. Should a mix-up occur, the lambs can then be reliably sorted out. Not surprisingly, all this takes a great deal of time, and Ashford Market now employ four extra people to complete these tasks. And these people can't just be dragged off the street, Chairman, they have to be skilled in the handling of animals. This, of course, adds to the cost of the operation passed back to the sheep seller. On Saturday, I received my purchase, purchase store lambs under the new system. The paperwork is exactly double as to what it used to be. I had apparently purchased from nine different farmers, and all of that information will need to be kept and sent back to the market when I sell them fat. Of the 250 lambs on that one journey, two had already lost their tags, and this will create more potential problems for me later on. As far as I can see, all this extra work will not make my lambs any more traceable than under a system of double tagging with plastic tags. I've just purchased £500 worth of electronic tags, money which would be, in my opinion, much better spent on buying more sheep. There is frustration with this system at the abattoirs, where they are struggling to install the electronic fast reading equipment. The background of flowing water and electric motors makes the Bluetooth technology unreliable. It must be remembered that abattoirs have their own efficient system of traceability in, in the first place anyway. The situation is further complicated in the field where farmers are selling their own bread slaughter lambs without the cost of electronic tags alongside those that they purchased as stores. If you're following me, Chairman, you're doing well. I hope I'm managing to persuade you how complicated all this, all this is. For those farmers, they will then have to read some individual tags. Right, Chairman, I just want to urge the Commission to back off this. The best people to regulate sheep identification are the British Government themselves. Thank you.